Today, we're looking at the grandpappy of fighting game archetypes, the Shoto. These guys are, to put it frankly, upsettingly broad and ill-defined. At its absolute broadest, Soul Bad Guy is a Shoto, Akuma is a Shoto, and Johnny Cage might be one. So let's get to work cutting the fat a little bit, so we can get something a bit more utilitarian that will eventually make everybody happy. So first off, what is a Shoto? For starters, the term Shoto comes from Shotokan Karate, the style of fighting that Ryu and in turn Ken was caught from their master Goken, and by extension, Akuma too. Whether this would actually be the case if palette swaps and sprite reuse weren't a valuable thing back in the day, we might never know, but alas, this is what we've got and that's the lore behind it. So let's take a look at what actually makes these guys up. All three of them share three special moves. Akuma has extras, but let's ignore them for now. Tatsumaki, a spinning kick that's unsafe on block but goes through projectiles, Hadouken, a projectile which is mostly safe on block, and Shoryuken, an invincible anti-air that can eat through an enemy's attacks, but it's unsafe. I've joked previously that this makes Ryu a bit of a Swiss army knife. His moves are very widespread across purposes and they cover basically all aspects of fighting games, besides mix-ups though, which believe me we'll talk plenty about. But he has a way to zone, a way to counter zone, and a punishment for jump-ins, effectively able to cover the whole screen. But it's as a trio of binary options. He has one option for one purpose, and that's it. And that's why I don't really like the term anime Shoto for characters like Soul. It's a crude way of saying, kind of a Shoto, but not really. Because while Soul does have a DP, a projectile, and a forward kicky move, he plays very, very differently to Ryu. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Firstly, to address immediate criticism I'll suspect I'll face for what I just said, Soul does have a low profiling move which sort of does have the purpose of countering projectiles, but it doesn't counter his own projectile that doesn't even go full screen. It just counters certain other projectiles, and while he does have another useful move to get in on opponents with, Bandit Bringer, which does get over his own projectile and it creates a de facto mix up between coming in low and coming in high, there's a pretty notable difference between the way he and Ryu play. Ryu plays a kind of pseudo-turtling method. It's a very reserved and disciplined playstyle where there's no real risks that need to be taken. Soul, however, flies forward with what is notoriously reckless abandon. And while Guilty Gear is a game with an aggro meter, and this is somewhat inherent to the game, Ryu will get set back to neutral after any single poke, whereas Soul sticks to his opponent like glue until he either hits or gets hit. It's so unlike Ryu's disciplined playstyle that most Ryu players don't wind up picking up Soul, or indeed nowadays Ken and Akuma. And so now for the most contentious part of the video, chewing the fat out of the archetype entirely. As I said in the opening, this archetype's so ill-defined it's disgustingly broad, and it's really detracted away from any practical usage of the term. So let's make some attempts to rein in the archetype and truly decide where a Shoto begins and where a Shoto ends. As detailed in the What Makes an Archetype video, which you should absolutely check out, archetypes are really there for newcomers to characters and franchises. People weren't debating who the mid-ranger was in Street Fighter 2. People just had to come into other games though and say, who is the person who plays like Zangief, and thus terms like Grappler were born. And then for those, people would eventually realise, hey, I want to play a Grappler, but Laura doesn't really feel like playing Zangief. So terms like Pixie Grappler were eventually born. All of that adds up into being good reason to not be afraid of the idea that not all Shotokan practitioners are really Shotos anymore. I know for some of you that's a horrific statement, so again I'll quickly clear some things up. There are Shotos in anime games, and I'm aware that some fudging of the lines is necessary for this archetype. There's some games where no one fits my definition or will fit another definition of a different archetype way better, but lustily, most games will have a de facto Shoto, given that it's a big four archetype. So look, I'm not going to crucify you for saying Kai is a Shoto even though he isn't, but I know that you'll crucify me for saying Ken isn't a Shoto even though he is. So let's talk about that. So, to start with what might be a history lesson to some of you Zoomers out there, Ken and Ryu used to be identical characters. And I don't just mean the move overlap that they still have to this day, but they were literally identical. Ken's differences were added in Street Fighter 2's many re-releases, but over time they'd grow to differ a lot more. In the old games, he's similar enough to Ryu that these differences don't come to a head until Street Fighter 4, which is the last game where I'll give him a pass and still call him a Shoto. See, before Street Fighter 4, Tatsu didn't actually have projectile vulnerability, and in Street Fighter 4, both of our heroes were given this feature so they could compete with Street Fighter 4's significantly stronger projectile game than in previous games. 
And while it was long before this that Ken was given this whole idea of being the more agile and aggressive version of Ryu, in this game that statement's about as far as that idea goes. We do see hints of a much more oppressive playstyle here with Thunderkick Feint leading to some very scary pressure, but for the most part, even his pressure is formulated quite similarly to Ryu in this game, but it's in Street Fighter V and beyond that I think Ken truly loses his place as a Shoto. Perhaps the thing that would most describe a rushed in character in a quick sentence is, they struggle getting in but they stick to you like glue, and that is exactly what Ken does in this game. While technically Ken can Tatsu through projectiles and V-Trigger, even this has a very high failure rate, and you're likely not going to manage to do it on reaction. Instead, Ken in this game isn't really about the whole rock paper scissors gameplay, and he's not even about fishing for simple hit confirms and cancels. Instead, what we get is rule loops, shimmying, frame traps. Ken is just a rushdown in this game through and through, and I think that even though he has a Tatsu, sure you can in DP still, I'd firmly say that in Street Fighter V and VI, he's lost this archetype. Someone who plays Ken in the new games is ultimately much more likely to play Makoto in SF4 and 3 than they are to play Ryu, or perhaps to even go back and main Ken at this point. And while some people might find that statement egregious and think that they themselves would play Ken in other games, I think ultimately when someone asks you who is the Shoto in this game, what they're going to be asking you is who plays most like Ryu. And lastly, they're much better served by characters like Gran and Hyde than someone like Soul or Akuma, and rarely will you see these players stick to these characters when suggested them as a result, and I think the defining factor in this idea is honesty. Honesty isn't something I've talked about much, if at all, on Archetype Archive. Partially because most of the time it doesn't matter, but also because it's kind of a meme. People love joking that difficult to react to moves like Greed Sever are honest and balanced, and for some of you who are less in on fighting game lingo, you might not even have any idea what honesty in fighting games is. It's a bit of an airy concept, but it's something like a character's moveset being very clear, simple and fair. An example of a dishonest move might be Byakuya 3C. This move, at least to me, looks like an anti-air. A Strive character might have this as a 6P, or a weirder character in another game could have it as a DP. But in reality, this move hits low. But it doesn't just hit low, it also hits high if you charge it for a second. This is an example of dishonesty. This move's purpose is unclear and it's obfuscated by its animation. One might learn it's a low only to start being hit with it while you're crouch blocking. It's a mess and it's intended to be. Now plenty characters have plenty ways to be dishonest, whether it's cross-ups, bad telegraphing, literal obfuscation of the screen, or etc. But I think the Shoto is the only archetype that must inherently be honest. And let me explain that further. When I'm writing Archetype Archive, I follow a four question structure for its scripts. What, why, who, and how. And I think the best way to look at Shotos is to look at the why. There's two ways to look at winning with an honest playstyle. For some people, it genuinely is just preference. Daigo has repped these guys for over 20 years, and a player as good as him can do just as well with a top tier, but you'll generally pick the best character with a similar game plan to a Shoto if a Shoto isn't viable competitively in his game. But the other half of picking them is Ego. On some level, winning with an honest playstyle means that out and out, you won. You didn't need overwhelming strength in any category in order to win, you just played fair and you won fair, and that makes you the better player. Some people get a real kick out of using nothing but the basics to win over opponents, which I think really is the defining way to quickly and simply tell what should and shouldn't be called a Shoto. Not necessarily a complete absence of any mix-ups or unique traits, but that their win condition should closely resemble Ryu's. You responded to a situation on screen with the correct option, and you weren't mashing far slash to keep your opponent in the corner. So to get to the heart of it, how do you play as a Shoto, if your character fits that definition? Well, all you have to do is respond to things sensibly. I think one of my favourite parts to learn Shotos is learning which DP cheats work in your game. Crouching DP being my favourite. Instead of doing forward, down, down forward, in some games you can just do down forward, down, down forward, and it will let you anti-air from a crouching position, which lands you more time to react to a jump in than if you input it while standing and having a taller hitbox. And this is key for a Shoto, because anti-airing consistently is what's going to make your opponent stick to the ground more often and respect your fireball game. But it's important, even if it's unintuitive, to not just roll your fireballs one after another. At a very high level you might occasionally see this, 
because at that point it's like a fro loop where the option is so simple people don't expect professionals to just spam it. But if you space out your fireballs well and you're not afraid to throw a slow fireball, then shimmy and then throw a fast one, or do two intermittent slow fireballs, the world is your oyster. But at mid-level, going between an intermediate and veteran player, you need to understand that you're forcing your opponent to jump, and that is your mix-up, and that's a very huge deal to your game plan. Especially in any game with chip damage, since they can't just wall themselves off from you all day. If they can parry, you're gonna have to pretend your fireball has like half the range that it really has. In Street Fighter 6, you can't just throw out Hadouken's full screen and expect them to land. You need to call out something specific, and it needs to be with a Denjin or EX Hadouken. As we've established, Shotos might have tools for everything, but the strength of those tools winds up being pretty mid. So you shouldn't fear things like wake up EXDP too much, and just run your own archetype's offense however you're supposed to. Against a bad Shoto player, EXDP's got like a 50% chance of coming out on wake up. So if safe jumps work in your game, it's amazing counterplay for these guys. And if your game doesn't, you can just shimmy to block on your wake up and then give you a free corner combo and explode them for doing it. Against a good Shoto player, DP can be a lot more reserved, but that just de facto improves your own offense and mix up in the matchup, because they're not going to be spamming their own reversals on you. So running your offense can actually be at its strongest against a good player, funnily enough. And also, since Shotos are so thin spread across the screen, they hate being forced to be the active player. If you just neutral jump over the projectiles sometimes, it will force them to approach you, which they really really suck at. If you somehow fail at defending their approach, it's probably something simple that they do, like crouching medium kick into Tatsu anyway, which leads to a weak, simple to defend wake up scenario, and likely you taking your turn back in just a few seconds. And that winds up being the case regardless of whichever archetype you're playing. And that's going to be all for the Shoto. Well, apart from a little dead end that I put on the back burner earlier in the video, and I've left out until just now. Akuma. Akuma isn't really one of these Shoto characters, but he's not a rushdown character either. So where does that leave him archetype wise? Well folks, I'm excited to announce the next archetype archive is the Demon Flipper. An archetype that he shares with Kami, Kimberly, Guy, and Charlotta? If you want to see me make the argument for that, you won't have to wait long, since the next episode of Season 2 is going to be the Demon Flipper. As I do with all my videos, for supporting me through my YouTube membership, I'd like to give a quick thank you and shout out to Archetype. If you want to support me, you can like, subscribe, or join my YouTube membership, or follow the links to my supporter pages down below. And as always, you can comment with any questions or queries that you may have, and they might wind up shaping the future direction of this channel and this franchise. That's going to be all for this video, but as always, stay safe.